morning, boys and girls. It's good to be with you today. We're going to begin by singing, Great is thy faithfulness. Sing with me. You know this. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Now let's sing the second verse. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars, in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies i see all i have needed thy hand hath provided great is thy faithfulness lord unto me yes boys and girls god is faithful faithful means he always keeps his promises we're going to learn about a promise he made in our story today. He's also promised that when we ask Jesus into our heart, that we become a part of his family. And so let's sing the family of God. And I pray that you can sing this, meaning that you are a member of his, his family, that you've asked him to come into your heart. Sing with me. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood, join heirs with Jesus as we travel this side. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. And we're going to talk about that family this morning. But before we do, Let's ask God what he wants to teach us through his word today. This story happened a long time ago. Remember, though, there is not a word in this Bible that is not true. It's all from God, and he has a message for you and me. Even though these things took place a long time ago, they have a message of what he wants to teach you and me today. So let's bow our heads. Our hands we fold. Our head we bow as we talk to God just now. Dear God, thank you for your true word, the Bible. Help us to be good listeners to what you want to teach us for our own self through this lesson today, even though it happened long ago. And we, we just give you the praise for giving us your Bible so that we can learn what you want to teach us. And we ask all this in your name. Amen. Well, boys and girls, our lesson today is still in the first book of the Bible, Genesis, but it's going to be three chapters. We're all the way to chapter 12, chapter 12, 15, and 17. We're going to hear some in all of those chapters today about a covenant that God made with a man named Abram. Well, a covenant is a promise between two people or between God and another person. And there was a man named Abram who lived with his wife, Sarah, and he was a descendant of Noah. Remember, 
we said Noah had a son named Shem, and um, and if we went way, way back to great, great, great grandfathers and all, we would see that Abram was part of that, a descendant of that line, is what we call it. And so God chose Abram to and promised Abram three things that he was going to give Abram three things. First of all, he was going to make Abram's name great. Secondly, Abram was going to have a big family. And third, he would be blessed. Well, God visited Abram and spoke to him in a vision. Remember I've told you that a vision is like when you're dreaming but you're awake and it's a how God would speak to people. He speaks to us now through his word, the Bible. But he spoke to people back then through visions. And he came to Abram and he said, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield and your reward will be great. Well, Abram, this was a good promise. But Abram was sad because he didn't have any children. He didn't have any offspring to share this with this um, promise. He said, well, maybe one of my slaves will be my heir. You know, an heir is somebody that inherits something. And so Abram said, but God had a better plan. God was going to give Abraham, or uh, Abram, his name was Abram, then we're going to learn later about his name being changed. He said, I want you to go outside and look up in the sky at the stars. He said, look up there. Count those stars. Well, Abram couldn't count the stars, just like you and I can't. There are too many. And he said, God promised that there are too many, but your offspring will be just that numerous, as many as the stars. Abram believed God, and God was pleased with Abram. God also promised Abram's family would keep the land where they were living. Now, they would have to move about, but they would always have that land. So God confirmed his covenant with Abram. That means he sealed that promise by giving, showing him how he was, uh, that he was a promise keeper. And we'll learn how he did that. First of all, he gave Abram some instructions of something to do. He said, bring me a cow, a goat, a ram, a turtle dove, and a pigeon. And Abram did just as God promised. And then he fell into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, God told him what was going to happen in his future. He said that Abram's family would be slaves in another country for 400 years before God would judge the nation and bless Abram's family, just as he had promised. But despite this, Abram would live a long and peaceful life. Well, when it got dark, God showed Abram something else. There was a smoking pot and a flaming torch. It tells us that right here in God's Word, the Bible. And God passed between the animals. This showed that God would be responsible for keeping his promise. The flaming torch represented God. Well, you see, boys and girls, what he meant by this was back then, people would kill an animal and split it. And then the two people that were making the promise would walk through the animals. And that meant that if they did not keep their word, that they would be dead, just like the animal. But this time, in this vision that God was giving Abram, he was God was the only one that walked through the animals. And that's why, because God was promising to be responsible to keep the promise. God was serious about his promise, so he did something else. He changed Abram's name. I gave that away a few minutes ago, didn't I? He changed it to, what did I tell you? Abraham. And this means father of a great multitude. Now, multitude is a lot. And so this was telling Abraham that he would be the father of many people. 
that he would be the father of nations and a king. And he said, I will keep my covenant between me and you and your future offspring, those children you will have, and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren, throughout all of those generations, all of them, as an everlasting covenant to be your God and the God of your offspring after you. And then also God promised to give Abraham and his offspring all of the land of Canaan where they were residing. And I will be their God, he said. You see, boys and girls, God chose Abraham to be the father of the nation in which Jesus would be born. And in this is the way that Abraham would be bless all nations as God had promised. God saw Abraham's faith in his promises and he counted that as righteous. Is Abraham righteous before him? Well, when we have faith in Jesus and ask Jesus to come into our heart, then Jesus' perfect righteousness brings salvation to you and to me. Remember, Romans 6, 23 tells us that God had a plan, the cross, that Jesus would die on this cross. And the first part of Romans 6, 23 says the wages of sin is death. And earlier in that, in Romans 3, it tells us that all of us are sinners. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So that's the bad news. But when we ask Jesus to come into our heart, he died on the cross to take our sins away. And then the gift of God is eternal life. And that's the only way. To God in this, in this eternal life is through Jesus. I ask you, have you confessed your sin? We're told in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful. That's why we sang that, great is our faithfulness. Just as he was faithful to keep all these promises to Abraham, he's faithful to keep his promises to you and me. And he has promised us that he, would, he promised that he would send his son Jesus, and he did. For God so loved the world that he sent Jesus to die. And so in 1 John 1, 9, it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins. He promises to forgive our sins and clean us from all unrighteousness. Make us right before God. And then we will live one day with God forever and ever. Well, I ask you, have you asked Jesus into your heart? If you haven't, talk to mom and dad. Talk to Pastor Ron about your next step. Well, let's praise God. We have so much to praise him for. We have, he is faithful. He's trustworthy. He's our friend. He's our provider. He provided a way for us to be saved. Let's go to him and praise him with our popcorn praises. Our hands we fold, our head we bow as we praise God just now. Dear God, I praise you that you provided a way, Jesus, to, who died for my sins so that I could be saved. Thank you, Lord. Your love, you loved me so much that you sent Jesus. You are my protector. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. You are faithful. You promise never to leave or forsake me. You are almighty. Nothing is too hard for you. Lord, we could go on praising you forever. But now we want to thank you. We want to thank you that you loved us so much that you were willing to die for us. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son to die on Calvary's tree. 
from sin to set me free. Someday he's coming back. What glory that will be. Wonderful his love to me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and free. Amen. Boys and girls, have a good week. I love you, and God loves you even more.